Today we are talking about different coffees from around the world. What do you wake up to? What do you look forward to? This is going to be a hard podcast for me today because there's a lot of translations to make and I'm not good at that. What is Buna? How is it prepared? Tavisi, ice coffee. The Irish coffee. Cafe de Ola. Egg coffee. A bonbon. Yul nan yum. Espresso and I'd never had one before. Coffee and cheese. The, the Kai Pienya. Vina mi langi. Farizira. Mazigrin. Welcome to Bean Stuff. Today we are talking about different coffees from around the world. We were looking at the notes here before the podcast, and I will say you have made quite the uh, book of notes. (laughs) Hopefully we can get to them all. There are a lot of drinks, Reed. We want to look at what drinks are common in different places around the world. When I think of that, what's common, I think of what do you wake up to? What do you look forward to? If you're into coffee and you're a certain part of the world, what are you going to enjoy having as your first cup? Let's just jump right in with Ethiopia. Ethiopia, I I think that's a good one to start with, the Mm -hmm. Buna, because, I mean, that's the birthplace of coffee. If you get to Ethiopia, it won't be hard to experience it. It's everywhere. It's in cafes. It's in hotels. Mm -hmm. And if you get invited to one, that's a real sign of respect, a sign of uh, friendship, hospitality. What is Buna? How is it prepared? Buna is prepared. um, It's basically done all in front of you. And it's the beans are roasted in front of you, a little pan, a little fire, uh-huh. and then it's ground just sort of like with a, by hand, and then it's put into a pot, uh, and hot water goes into that, and uh, and then it goes into cups, and you will have those cups, and you need to wait. When I say wait, you're going to need to do it at least drink three cups sort of style of thing because wow. there's, there's a whole things that go on with that. So there's a ceremony with it and it's also prepared kind of you sit over fire and all these different yep. things. So it's a it's quite a ceremony. It's also a mark of, of friendship and lots of things. So it's something you typically don't want to say no to. Is that correct? That would be that would be correct, Reed. And it's going to be a little different. So you're going to have to, it's going to be a little different, but you're going to enjoy the coffee. Is, it's like it's like a real state. It's just, this is real. This yeah. Is good. So we're in Ethiopia. Let's go ahead and travel over to Turkey. Mm-hmm. What's something that's common in Turkey as far as coffee? Turkey over there, you're going to have, I, I'm not sure, and this is going to be a hard podcast for me today because there's a lot of uh, translations to make and I'm not good at that at the best of times. But the Kavisi, uh, you you sort of get to know this one a little more. There's, a, again, a ceremony with it. It's a mm-hmm. hospitality thing. You would easily get it. Uh, I've even been to one in Portland in a double decker bus where they do the, the Turkish coffee. Wow! But typically, it's it's fine ground coffee that's uh, uh, usually uh, say been simmered in a special copper or brass pot called a kezvi, and it's that's the key there. It's really very unfiltered, so you're going to get grounds. If you don't like mm. grounds, don't have a Turkish coffee. I mean, it's so popular and it becomes such part of Turkish life. I know UNESCO even said it once, confirmed that it's the an intangible cultural heritage of Turkey. Wow. I mean, it's known out there. And it can be very sweet, though, as well, correct? That was the There's second part. a lot part. of sugar added. A lot of sugar. So if you, by the tip we're here, if you're going to have one of these, where, wherever mm. it is, mm-hmm. just be careful how much sugar you have, because you will probably end up saying, I'm drinking sugar rather than coffee. Gotcha. So it's this unfiltered, very, uh, very strong coffee prepared mm-hmm. in a copper pot. Is mm-hmm. that correct? Yeah, correct. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, it can be this very strong thing, but it's also very strong in Turkish culture. And let's move a little closer to home. And, and by home at the moment, I mean directly at home. Oh, right. Yes. So United States, one of the things that we, I, I would say we have somewhat of a wide variety of different Yeah, coffees. there's a lot of, lot of cultures merged into the States and you get right. a lot of stuff. Right. Typically, if you head to, you know, and it's simplistic in a sense, mm-hmm. you can, I, I would say there's a good espresso around. You've got to find it. And you really go from the espresso, you've got a lot of independent places that are doing good jobs with, with it. Mm-hmm. Then we've done a podcast on gas station. We did. The petrol station, I would call it. But yeah. There's gas station. There's a real ver- range of quality. Mm-hmm. That's what we found. And yet there's a similarity to them all. You know, it's on the pot, long time. Uh, it's going to be pretty strong. Mm-hmm. All that sort of stuff goes on. Bitter. Yeah. So in the States, there's a lot of iced coffee. There's a lot of espresso. And there's also a lot of uh, brewed coffee like we have yes, at the gas yes. station. And you mentioned iced coffee there. That's a big one in the States. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've really done a good job. And you can make iced coffees in different ways. At home, you can make it. Right. But you can generally go and get iced coffees. Let's go to Ireland. In Ireland, we've got the Irish coffee. And that's, a, again, in my culture, you would have heard of that. And uh, eventually... 
invented, what, 1940, I think it was invented. Mm. But again, it's it's hot coffee. Mm-hmm. And here's the differences with it. It's a hot coffee prepared with Irish whiskey and sugar and then uh, whipped cream. If you've got, you know, feeling a bit sort of, you know, under the weather, maybe the pick me up, but it, it may not be. Maybe may take you down too. I don't know. <laughs> we jump back over to this side of the pond. Yeah, go uh, to go a neighbor. On, yeah, go to our neighbors in the south, Mexico. Yep. Yeah, the Cafe de Ola. And it's a common one there, and its distinguishing character would be the cinnamon stick. Interesting. So it's simmered with a cinnamon stick. Yeah. Um, and this is a traditionally served in a clay mug. Yeah. And, and it's something that's pretty common to find in Mexico. Yeah, it is. And there's a, don't forget, there's some unrefined cane sugar there as well. So again, gotcha. the sugar often comes up, I think, because you may have a lower grade coffee mm-hmm. uh, that is a little bitter. And therefore, the sugar just helps to balance that out. To counteract that a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and yeah. So it makes sense uh, that you add some sweetener of some sort in there. Good. Vietnam. Vietnam. This one I had not heard of before. I have, I've never been to Vietnam, and I read up about the egg coffee. You know, the name itself does not sound great. Egg, the egg yolks, It's uh, that's the part they're using of the egg. Interesting. Guess what? They're adding sugar. Sugar, okay. More sugar in the terms of condensed milk. Uh huh. And then they're going to add some, usually some Robusta coffee. Interesting. Interesting that it's Robusta. And like we had said with the flavor side of it, you know, potentially that you, obviously you're adding a lot. You're adding egg, sugar, condensed milk. You're covering up a lot of the flavor. So yeah. it's potential that, hey, you don't, you don't need a wrap because you don't taste it. Yeah. And the condensed milk's there, but, you know, milk, fresh milk is not as available in Vietnam. In Spain. Spain. The Cafe Bonbon. Very well said, Reed. Well, that's what I would, how I would say. Now, have you had one of these? No, never been to Spain. Oh, you've never been, been to Spain. been around Europe and places, never been to Spain, oddly oh, enough. We'll have to take a bean stuffed trip to Spain. Ooh, if anyone's listening, I can. Or wants to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> uh, but I believe the, one of the common ones there and more popular perhaps in uh, Valencia and Spain here you've got half espresso so it's not just a brewed coffee it's it's half espresso with half sweetened condensed milk usually in a clear glass you know what's funny it's funny it, it, it's it's a little bit a little bit similar to the the Vietnamese egg coffee obviously minus the egg right yes the, the, the condensed milk is what I'm thinking and the espresso rather than perhaps robusta so who knows right. yeah it's, it's different I mean I was told when I was reading about I was, you know look for us if you're in Spain look for a church spire go to that mm-hmm. go to church great but uh <laughs> usually somewhere associated that was a cafe and a lot mm. of people will go there to have their morning coffee it's interesting it also said and i've heard this i knew this was in italy which we'll get to shortly yeah but uh, you don't want to prolong your drinking like we do here in the states where you sit there with the free wi-fi and you live all day <laughs> In Spain, if 30 minutes, you might be politely asked to leave. France. What do we got in France? Another one, France, the Café Au Lait. Ooh. And Au Lait with milk. Uh, not to, This one, because I, I, when I first went there, I asked for a, a coffee, and this is what I was given. I felt like I was given a glass of hot milk. Um, <laughs> now, why is that? Well, because latte. Mm. It, it gets confused with a, a, a latte, which is, is a, a milk drink but it's it's with espresso and it's 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 not as much milk probably as the the cafe or latte and cafe or latte is done with percolated french press uh, um, um, coffee it's a lot stronger and therefore so it's made with actual uh percolated coffee yep. as opposed to espresso exactly it's percolated coffee with hot milk yeah if you ask for just a straight coffee if you if you i don't know what the french is for just a, a black coffee yeah you'll probably find it's fairly strong Pretty just potent. by itself, which again, the milk sort of tempers that out and balances that out as such. And now China, we've got, to, I'll, I'll let you pronounce this one. I was practicing this one before and I'm going to get it totally wrong, <laughs> uh, but uh, the Yul Nan Yum. Hey, sounds good to me. <laughs> it does sound, thank you. Now thank this you. one's an interesting one because it's a bit of a hybrid um, as far as coffee goes. I mean, a lot of these have been hybrids with yes. coffee and different things, but this is coffee and tea. Right, and when you I, again, I've never had one of these. Right, right, and, and it'd be interesting because what I read it's it's a mixture of three parts coffee and seven parts milk tea. Interesting. So you've got tea, milk, and coffee sort of all combining here. Some would say it's the best of both worlds. If you can't decide you want a cup of tea <laughs> or a cup of coffee, let's have let's have one of these. Um, I wonder if it tastes a little bit like a dirty chai, which is that's coffee I, and chai. Combined, yeah, I think it? you're probably on the right track there. <clears throat> uh, Interesting. Perhaps not as sweet. I'm not sure. And I don't is know. This one, is it hot or cold typically? You can do it both. You can do hot or cold. Hong Kong's a place that's very popular there as well in China, but uh, it's... Uh, 
Yeah, that's it's wow. one of what they would say is yeah, I'd like to have one of those things. We've talked about this country a little bit previously in some, and I think in an episode we did on espresso. Yes, on the espresso machine. Oh yes, but Italy, Italy, and you've had personal experience in Italy with coffee. Correct? That's where I was spoiled with coffee when I got to Italy. Is that where you got ruined into coffee? I did. I really did. I suddenly had this espresso, and I'd never had one before. And I, what is this goodness? <laughs> um, and they. That, there's different, of course, you could get, you could have a straight espresso, which is right. in Italy, that's, you would typically do that, just have a one shot mm. in a bar, have it drink, <laughs> gone, and you're out of there. In it, Italy, espresso is pretty common. That's where you first had your espresso exactly. e- encounter. Yeah, and you're not going to really encounter instant coffee here in Italy. You're going to have the real deal here uh, in, in Italy. And again, it's going to be not, not typically cut with milk or stuff like that, so it's going to be typically a little stronger. Yep, yep, yes, that's true. Even with cafe uh, in Italy, I think it means espresso. I mean, it's, wow. it's really where the whole thing uh, of the espresso drink really came from. Australasia, New Zealand, well Australia. Said. Well said, yeah. What is more common? More common there now these days is the espresso. When I was growing up, there was drip coffee, there was percolated coffee. Yeah. I said the word. But... Um, but in today, it's that they're still there, obviously. But mm-hmm. in, if you go to cafes and things, you're going to find espresso as the predominant drink. And if you want a black coffee, you're probably right. going to get a long black or something, or mm. Americano or whatever. Um, and they will just say, here's your black coffee. Yeah. And so what are the, some – there's some uh, – <coughs> with that black coffee, there's the long black, which is just shot over hot water. And then there's the Americana, like you said, which was a shot. It's, if, yeah, it's funny. It's really the same thing, except it's, I think, and it, I could be wrong here, but it's when you put this uh, the shots of espresso uh-huh. into the hot water or do you put the hot water into the espresso? <laughs> so hot water into the espresso is the Americano, the espresso into the uh, uh, hot water is the uh, long black. I like that one, actually, because I like the idea of the espresso going in the top. Uh-huh. So the first thing you drink is more the espresso. Some mm-hmm. say, well, you mix it up anyway. So <laughs> well, put sugar in it, whatever. Kind of a staple for us, which is from New Zealand, Australia, would mm-hmm. be the flat white. Correct. And just quickly, what is it? What is a flat white? What is the ratio? In if a flat you white? went from there, you'd probably think you're getting a, a, a cappuccino. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a slightly smaller, uh, uh, less milk than a than a cappuccino. So is it two parts coffee, three parts milk? That's about right. That's about right. Yeah. And then that's where you get all the the uh, latte art on top because it's it's not just a foam over top, just a milk like a cap, a chino. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's you can it's it's done and you can put some milk into that. And it's, some would say the flat white too is how you put the milk in. Do you just flop it in the top or do you go down the side? There's different expressions of it, mm-hmm. and uh, but there's some technique to it. There is some technique to it. There's uh, this one is a little bit interesting as we go over to Finland. Yes, the uh, world of rally and all sorts of good stuff. Oh, but, sure. uh, this one is a little interesting. It's it's coffee and cheese. I, yeah, I put this one in here because I thought, what? I've never had this one. I I, 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 I haven't. Actually. I'd be willing to try it, but uh, immediately I'm not thinking that it tastes the best. Kaffee oost. I'm probably not saying that right as well. But a hot coffee poured over chunks of cheese curds. Interesting. I, I wonder. I wonder if are the cheese curds removed at some point? I don't know. I've got a picture in front of you there, Reed, and someone's got a spoon there. That just looks like they're going to eat just the cheese curd. They're not even going to have the coffee. Huh. And don't it's, know. But it's a unique combination to Finland. Yeah. And it's yeah. something that they enjoy. Yeah. As you get over to Scandinavia and over that sort of side of the world, again, yeah. my recollection is very strong coffee mm. um, in terms of black coffee. Interesting. Uh, in Greece, uh, there's the frap. The frap. It's 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 is it's, 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 it's spelled F A or sorry F R A P P E. Yes. And here in the states we call that a frappe. Yeah. But it's it's pronounced just frap. I believe so. When I looked at my translator, that's what it uh, it's <laughs> that's what it told me. Gotcha. But it was invented by Nescafe in 1957. Yeah. And when you say Nescafe, of course you're going to start thinking instant coffee, which right. you'd be correct. Interesting. Uh, so it's iced instant coffee typically. Uh, yeah. And, and that's then drowned with uh, milk foam. Hmm. And milk foam is a whole thing in itself. Are you right. How you make the foam is going to make it sweet or make it sour. I mean, how, how you go about it. We got Vietnam. And th- how do you see this one? Whoa. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to... Take a stab. I'm going to say uh, Cafe Sa. 
which uh, in Vietnam, it's it's another drink. I've got a picture of it there. It looks very interesting sort of mm. style of drink there. Uh, but uh, it's it's known from, and I haven't had one of these, yeah. but it's known to be very sweet and very strong coffee mm. again. And what is it? How is it? How is it? What it's does made, it consist of? Yeah, it's made of coarse, uh, coarsely ground dark roast coffee. Uh-huh. So it's a darker roast. It's coarse, which is like a French press sort of style. But it's brewed straight into a cup of condensed milk interesting and ice is through a french drip filter so you know put the ice on the top and it drips through into the into into the drink so it's it's an interesting mixture but uh, vietnam that's what you need to have uh, if you want to sort of you know check out the local culture brazil brazil uh, i have had coffee in brazil and it's a it's a good variety in itself but uh, commonly i didn't know this because i had a friend in brazil uh, uh, who a cafezinho or I used to call them Zeno, but uh, that's a typical drink, small, dark coffee in Brazil. Some would, I, I looked up and my first one was the, the Caipinha, uh-huh. uh, it was Brazil's national drink, but said, a lot of people said locally it's more the, the uh, Cafezinho is, is the local drink. Interesting. It's often pre-sweetened again, uh, generally brewed with sugar. So Austria. Yes, and Austria. This one's got an interesting name. It's uh, how do you say this one? I'm gonna take a guess and it's Vina Mi Langi. Okay, Vina Mi Langi. Yeah, that sounds better. And it's similar to a cappuccino, correct? That's right. Yep. And again, it's really all they've done. They've topped a cappuccino with steam milk, milk foam, mm-hmm. and then added some whipped cream and cocoa powder. <sighs> Yeah. Sounds kind of good. Something you'd, I think you go to Vienna or somewhere, you would have one of these, I'm sure. Let's go down to Germany there, Reid. Okay, what do we got in Germany? Uh, again, pl- this is a place I used to love. I'd go skiing, instructing, and, and after the day, and I'd have a black coffee, very strong. And I did at once have one of these, but not w- at that time, but just when I was in some town in, in Germany, mm-hmm. the Fariesera, Um which is really coffee. This is going to sound a bit like an Irish coffee a bit, but coffee with rum and sugar topped with whipped cream and chocolate shavings. Ooh. So I, I don't know who made it first, the Irish or the, the Germans. I'm not sure. And to to wrap up the okay. entire thing, we've got Portugal. Portugal, the so Mazigrin. The Marzi, Mazigrin. What's, yes. What is the Mazigrin? Uh, this is one, I think we probably started right at the beginning of our <laughs> podcast, and we talked about uh, words like espresso, but also lemon juice or lemon mm. soda to to provide its, you know, the, the difference here of, of the drink. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, that's kind of our, our recap of some popular drinks throughout the world. Again, there are a lot of drinks that are popular throughout the world, like drip coffee. You might find that in lots of different places. Yeah. But yeah. these are some ones that are more specific to those different countries yeah. and different things there. Again, those are not all of them, I'm sure. And so, we, you know, we may have missed a couple. So if that's the case, let us know. I was going to say, I'm sure people who are listening to this are well-traveled and go all sorts of places. And yeah. they say, you didn't do this one. This was a really odd one I had here, but it was really nice. It would be we'd love to try it. Mm-hmm. But thank you again so much for listening. Thank you for tuning in and for uh, checking us out. <laughs>